today I'm sharing with you my very secret, but very good, blueberry and cinnamon mead recipe. Let's get started. So I have made this mead a lot. And um, if you watched my channel for long, you know that a while back I made a Mace Windu inspired mead that was a blueberry and cinnamon. I really liked that combination, and so I decided to go even further and see how I could develop it to where it was, in my opinion, perfect. And I think it's pretty much perfect at this point. So I teamed up with some friends, specifically my friend Jake, or Dogstick Fetch, who's part of my Discord and YouTube community. Uh, he made this mead with a couple tweaks. I took and took his tweaks and then also incorporated them with my own versions and we have landed on this penultimate final recipe that's freaking killer. And I am stoked to share it with you. So I'm gonna go and share it on screen and show you what it is, walk you through the process. We're gonna taste them, so let's talk about it. For this recipe, I use clover honey, which is a light honey. I suggest using light honey here. It just works better than darker honey for this recipe. 12 pounds of clover honey. 12 pounds of blueberries in the primary. We're gonna use pectic enzyme, and we're gonna talk about that in a second. Four pounds of blueberries for the secondary, so a total of 16 pounds right there. Three cinnamon sticks. We are using specifically the Lauvin BM 4x4. You can also use some of these other yeast I'll put on screen that I've tested with, but the Lauvin BM 4x4 is the best one for this recipe, for berries for tannin, for mouthfeel, all of those things. And of course, more honey to back sweeten, yeast nutrient, all of those things you saw in the recipe. A couple important things, pectic enzyme is gonna save and make this recipe so much better. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that in the process. But I have three bottles here. These are different versions of it that I've made. This is the most current one, current one right here. This is just an example of the most current one. It just looks nicer. And then this one right here is actually one that is about three months older um, than this one right here, but I have made this five or six times. Um, I just didn't pull out a really old bottle. So how do you make this brew? Well, it starts a few days before brew day because you're gonna get all of your blueberries. Specifically, I'm, I'm using 16 pounds in this recipe. I'm gonna use 12 up front. I am taking my frozen blueberries that I got and uh, putting them into a bucket and putting some pectic enzyme on top of that and letting that set for about a day or two. What happens there, pectic enzyme breaks down the fruit skins, uh, yields more juice out of that fruit, which gets more fruit character, which is super, super important. If you just put whole blueberries in without pectic enzyme, the skins of the fruit kind of keep the fruit from um, getting rid of or expelling that juice inside. And that's where the flavor is. So, about two days before brew day, pectic enzyme, 12 pounds of blueberries. Uh, I should specify this is for about a five gallon batch. Then you're going to, on brew day, sanitize your stuff, use star sand, any brewing grade equipment, and you're gonna go ahead and mix together your 12 pounds of honey, your 12 pounds of blueberries that have been setting with pectic enzyme. There should be a lot of juice coming from them now, hopefully. Um, and then of course your water up to you know five gallons in this case. And then uh, we're gonna blend that together. I use a drill attachment so it ends up kind of shredding the blueberries, also helpful. You can press blueberries too. Uh, the skins are gonna be helpful for providing tannin for this recipe as well. So you can use the skins of the fruit if you press them too. Once that's mixed together, take a gravity reading. This is about 1.080 starting gravity. So we're looking at about a 10.5% uh, ABV brew. At the end, we are going to add our yeast, that Lauvin uh, 4x4. It is so good for this recipe. There's some other ones that are good, but that one is amazing for it. And I can shout out to uh, Jake for helping me convert to that one for this. Then we let it start fermenting. It takes, uh, you know, it might take about two weeks for it to ferment through that. During that process, it is encouraged to go ahead and open up the container nicely. I know some of you are scared to do this. Go ahead and push those blueberries down. This will help them 
continue to stay moist and not develop mold. If you just walk away from the recipe and the container, you're probably gonna get some mold in there. Don't worry about opening the container. It's not the end of the world. There's lots of CO2 being produced, so you'll be okay. Once you've punched the cap, as we call it, for, I don't know, two weeks, take another gravity reading, see if it's done. Most of the time, this recipe is gonna stop at about 1.000. So uh, at this point, my recipe was at 1.000, a couple weeks in, and we went ahead and moved it into another container. Now here's the next step. We are going to actually take and stabilize this brew, meaning we're using potassium sorbate and metabisulfite specifically in this recipe. You can also pasteurize, which is the process of heating up the brew. I'm not choosing to do that, but you can. You need to halt fermentation because now we are going to add four more pounds of blueberries. You can go ahead and do the pectic enzyme thing a couple days before as well. That will help get more juice out. By stabilizing, we are basically not letting the yeast ferment on the blueberries we add, so we get more blueberry character back to the brew because post-fermentation, blueberry is often gone. After that's sat for, um, I don't know, maybe about a week or two, we're gonna add some cinnamon sticks. I use specifically these simple, uh, all natural uh, cinnamon sticks. I put about one, uh, well, for me, it totaled out to be about two, or sorry, about one per gallon. Sorry, I had to do my math there. And let that set for a mysterious amount of time. Now I say mysterious because this is where you get to decide how much spice character you want. Do you want it to be more blueberry or do you want it to be more cinnamon? Obviously, tasting it will help you decide that. My experience has been that cinnamon specifically gets stronger over time, so I go a little lighter on the cinnamon at the front. Let the cinnamon sticks set in for a couple days maybe, and then go ahead and rack off of them into another container. I also love to oak this recipe, so I put some oak, specifically oak chips on this, some French oak chips, for about two weeks to give it some more tannin, some more oaky flavor, which is helpful, makes it more complex. We also are going to back sweeten. I back sweeten with some honey to get up to about 1.024 final gravity. You can go sweeter if you want or not. Um, the last thing you can do, this is that you don't have to do, but it helps with mouthfeel and overall niceness of it. If you put a little bit of vanilla extract in there. It will soften the mouthfeel. It will also help, in my experience, temper down some of that alcohol heat. So now our brew is like two months old at this point. We have the choice to let it set for a long time and age, or we can go ahead and bottle it. Now I let mine age for a while longer. This batch is currently three months old. We then bottle it, as you're seeing right here, and you're ready to taste it or let it age. So, Pretty simple process. I know some of you are like, oh my gosh, if you've never made a mead, that seems complex. It's not too crazy. It's quick turnaround. What I love about this recipe is that it actually turns around really fast and it's pretty dang good. So let's go ahead and open up some bottles. We're gonna start with the version or the recipe that I just told you about. I literally just bottled this a little bit ago. So here's what we got. It's a beautiful blue, blue purple color. Nice and clear because I let it age for a long time. We're about three months old, so there's still a smidge of alcohol heat, but the cinnamon comes in and actually blends with that alcohol smell, aroma. The uh, sweetness from that blueberry is there. There's an earthy character. It's overall just really pleasant. A little bit of that oak aroma and vanilla. Here we go. That 10, 24-ish sweetness is like perfect to me. It highlights just enough of the blueberry to bring back the sweetness, that character. A dry blueberry mead is pretty tart. It's not great, in my opinion. So a little bit of back sweetening really takes this to the next level. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's smooth. Again, only three months, 10.5% ABV. You wouldn't be able to tell that, honestly. It doesn't really have a lot of burn and there's a good tannin to it. It is, it's just so freaking good. I am, I, I love, love this recipe. And I mean, I'm impressed. I'm really impressed with um, the adjustments that Jake made. And he took this to the next level because I had some other 
kinds of things I had done with it, but this is the final recipe. Now I wanna open up another one. This is actually one that went to the Mazer Cup this past year, or this year. Same recipe, this one is only about three to four months older. And I, I'm mostly curious, because I'm, I wanna know, <laughs> based off of uh, what they said, I wanna taste it again. If I'm not mistaken, this got a 40 at Mazer Cup, which they go out of 50, and that scale, 40 is pretty good for Mazer Cup, so uh, I, I was happy with that. Here is this version. This one actually is a little bit lighter. Yeah, just a smidge lighter. Oh, but that age though has really brought out some more of that oak. Um, there's a lot more oaky side on this one. Blueberry is rich, it's deep. That four by four adds some mouthfeel. Four by four being the yeast. The Lauvin yeast we used is wonderful for berries. It really pronounces nice berry character and works well with the, the berries. It also, um, really helps with mouthfeel. So this does adapt and give a little bit of mouthfeel to it. Oh yeah, juicy and rich. Um, this iteration has a little less cinnamon, I think than the, yeah, than the one I just created, but there is that nice character. The bright honey, light honey works well. Um, Jake actually promoted, he brought me a bottle, which I'll talk about in a second, um, using sweet clover honey, which has some cinnamon character to it. So you can do that, golly. This recipe is so good. And I know some of you are like, well, he's tasting it by himself. And so how can that be true? Well, of course I think it's true. I've given it to people, people love this recipe. Enough to where I've burned through probably 25 gallons of it in like a year and a half. So I'd say that's pretty good. If you would like to see the uh, expanded, really changes I've made to this recipe, um, based off of what Jake and I have done. You can actually find a video on the Man Made Mead Extras channel that's live now as well. That video is me bringing a specific version of it to Jake and him bringing a version. And ultimately we landed on this recipe via that kind of tasting. We talked about the changes and it was really fun. So you can find that on the Extras channel um, in the, the link below as well. I think you should go make this recipe. It's pretty simple. I'll put the ingredients down below. Watch back if you wanna know how to make it, but let me know if you do. I'd be curious to see. This is really fun because it's been a long time in the making, but I am so pleased with it. And I think you will be too. Thank you for watching. Thank you for spending your time here. I've got a ton of other bomb recipes. My apple cinnamon is amazing. I, I'm saying this and I feel like kind of weird because I'm like boasting about it, but also, I've just spent years developing these recipes. So apple cinnamon, uh, my peppermint meat is super good. I have a, a pina colada meat recipe that's also pretty friggin' baller. I'm trying to go through all mine. I've done a bunch of good traditionals. Anyways, a lot of great recipes on the channel. I hope you will go check them out and I hope you will make this one specifically. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the future with another video. Cheers.